we're ready. live. <laughs> we're ready. We're live. I'm Jeremy. I'm Macy. We are LSH Live, helping you guys be better riders every day through this quarantine deal. Mm -hmm. You're live on Facebook today. We played a little bit with YouTube yesterday, or yesterday and today. Right. Thank yeah, you so much for yeah. a thousand subscribers. Though. Oh yeah, I would say we were forgetting the most important part. We you guys are a thousand awesome. subscribers today, which was so exciting. A thousand subscribers, very very cool. So um, we are going to try to go live on YouTube uh, in the we future. Did, we did today briefly for like five minutes. I, I don't know if our account is like completely updated with the thousand subscriber thing to so let us go live. So if we know. do go live, we'll post a video. Yes, we'll make sure you guys on Facebook know that we're live on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and we'll try it, and if we like it, we'll say live on YouTube, and if we don't, then we won't. We'll yeah. stay live on Facebook. Yep. We'll see how it works. Um, but uh, today, we're going to take it back to basics a little bit. We're going to go through some body mechanic stuff. I had a lot of people ask me questions about um, getting my horses broke and soft and supple everywhere, um, and how do we get that started, right. right? So a lot of basic questions. How do you start your colts? Um, what what groundwork do you do? So we're gonna do some groundwork exercises. We're gonna do some um, different things, different things that I make sure I have to have before I get on and put the first ride on, yeah. right? Um, and some some things that you want to know about the way you use your hands. Yes, yeah, so we have a bridle here to show you yep. guys today. Yep, we got a bridle here. We're gonna show you guys a couple exercises you can do at home to make sure that you're using your reins effectively. Um, and these are things that you can do with or without a horse, which is why I like them. Um, think of it as like I'm a big hockey fan, so mm -hmm. having stick drills. Right, having stick drills where you can come out there and have uh, learn some handling, some puck handling, or ball handling, or whatever it is you want to play. Um, same thing with our our reins, right? Okay. You got to have that kind of rein handling skills if you want to communicate effectively with your horse. Right. right? So we're gonna go over some stuff with Macy, um, talking a little horse. bit more about rib control. If we get into it today, if we can go far enough, um, we'll ride Peanut and we'll go a little bit more in depth with that rib control stuff because. A lot of questions and a lot of concerns about that. A lot of people confused about what we were doing. Um, That's hard though. It's hard. And that was that was kind of like a quick video. Like we had the tripod set up, we were pretty far away. That was like the first video we did. One that, of the first right? live ones, yeah. And it was yeah. crooked and yeah. yeah it was a mess. <laughs> so we can, we can touch base on that. We can help you guys out with that one because that was kind of a mess. That was a mess. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So if you guys have questions, write them down, save yep. them to the end, right? Or send them to us on Instagram right now or Facebook, yeah, message Macy. Here. I know. You, so can, you can, you can a message. private message me yep. on yep. Instagram and I'll yep. read them at the end. Yeah, we'll go through the questions at the end, but we're going to be using Peanut today. Someone asked me if I had a yearling to do the groundwork stuff with, and I don't, no. unfortunately. Next year. Next year. We'll have Shaka Baba. <laughs> year after. In two years from now, we'll be able to do the, <laughs> we'll be able to do the groundwork Just a little video, excited. So just stay tuned. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so two years from now, we'll have that video. Hopefully, we have another year before then. But uh, Katrina Johnson, send us one. Katrina Johnson can tell you how that the yearling stuff works. Yeah. So we did a lot of lunge line stuff with her babies. Um, put a good foundation on those babies, and you'll start to see how all of these tools and all these puzzle pieces are going to come together. Yep. So it's a huge piece. Like we're giving you guys little pieces everywhere along the way. But hopefully what you see is there's an overarching theme, an overarching idea where all those pieces come together. Right. right? And that's kind of what we're looking for. We want to have a cohesive program, start to finish, all the problems in between, helping you guys out. Because I, there's nothing more that I hate than getting to the horse show and finding that I have a hole somewhere. It's not good. <laughs> not good. And discovering that you you missed a piece or you didn't touch that one and your horse is going to tell you what that what piece that is. Right, exactly. I promise. Promise yep. your horse will let you know. Mm -hmm. They will. <laughs> um, so and we'll go over some of that. Our um, giveaway ends in two days. Tuesday, April 7th. Yep. So giveaway don't forget ends. to tag a friend and subscribe yes. to our YouTube channel. And then you'll be entered in a drawing to win a free month. Free um, month on Patreon and a free video critique. And if you guys haven't checked out the online horse show deal. Oh, yeah. That's I cool. think. The virtual horse show. The virtual horse show. I think I might get to be one of your judges. You judge. <laughs> so you guys know I'll be critiquing your rides and giving you lots of good feedback. So hopefully that can take off and hopefully that works out. Um, so I think I'll get to be one of the judges. That'd be fun. I would yeah, have a good time with that. Yep. Would. So that would be fun. I think they said they had like 200 entries last time. So hopefully that's that all goes smooth and we can get that worked out and that'd be a lot of fun. It would be a lot of fun. Yep. Um, so then uh, what else we got? Other housekeeping stuff. Um, YouTube's running. Patreon. So I want to type in. Oh yeah, well, let's yeah, pin yeah. the website real quick. We'll pin the we'll website. Pin the a lot of people asked last time about the website. Um, and where that was, I know Bonnie shared it with us last time, but we can pin it, maybe. 
<laughs> Maybe. I was getting your finger get. <laughs> ah, oh, I can't. No, she's going to mess it all up. So we can pin that website. We'll have that website pinned to the top of the page here. So you guys can have the link of that, the Patreon site. Oh. Um, that's where most of our videos are going to go. Maybe we won't be able to do it with it on the all gimbal. All right, we can do it on the gimbal. Okay, okay. Maybe Shoot. Bonnie can type it in there for us. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Bonnie, we need your assistance. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so we have that site on there so you guys can make sure you check out the Patreon page. That's where all of our videos are, right? So we've been do doing these live videos. This is what, video number five or something? Yeah. While we're quarantined. Yep. But um, the, the Patreon site has like 70 some videos. So there's tons more stuff. Chris, <laughs> long time to see. Uh-huh. Been a while. So yeah, the Talk Patreon site has all of our videos. Um, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Where Bonnie's like a moderator. Pin this comment. Awesome. All right, so it's pinned. So if the comments come, I will still like, stay there. Perfect. All right, thank you. <laughs> yep, so that will be, uh, you can check out that website, all the different videos that we have on there. We've done tons of videos. Um, people are like, we miss your lives. It's so much fun. We have been doing videos we have for been years. Doing videos. Like 70 some videos. It's just not as entertaining, you know? Well, you're not in them. I know. It's just I'm lonely the main old me. Part. <laughs> just sharing information, boring old information. Boring old information. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll get started with this video. Yes. We'll give people a chance to get on. Yep. Um, so, my, my bread and butter right here. Bread and butter. Medium twist, D ring snaffle, okay? I love the medium twist D-ring snaffle. You do love it. Because you have to think of your horse as on a spectrum, okay? He's always going one way or the other. He's too dull or he's too light. I want to ride in the middle. Right. I want my horse to stay in the middle. So whether it's if his mouth, if he's over bridled or he's straight out with his nose, I would love to train on him right in the middle. Right. So the cool part about that is I can put that horse in the middle and kind of go for the feel that I want, right? which is a horse that sits on the reins, maintains a steady amount of pressure, not over bridled, not under bridled. Right. You saw Dubs yesterday, he was over bridled, okay? Right. You put him down, he goes his nose straight out, but I don't have much control from here to here. Right. He's either nose straight out or over bridled. And I want him to be right here. Right. So I ride in a medium set of equipment, right? This is right in the middle. I could go to a thinner twist if I had to, or I could go to a straight snaffle with no twist, or I could go to a rubber snaffle in the middle and I could have like, if he gets over bridled, like we've rode dubs plenty in a rubber snaffle. A rubber snaffle and a smooth snaffle. Teach him how to push on it, right? Yep. And then we put him back in that medium bit to see if he's right in the middle. And he's not, right? He's still on the over bridled, too soft spectrum. Yep. Okay. So same thing with my feet. If I get my horse to where they're too soft and they're running away from my spurs, I got to back my spurs up. Right. By the same token, if I get a horse that's really dull and it leans into that foot too hard and I'm having to work too hard, I'll just change my equipment. Right. And that's something for you guys at home. Make sure you have equipment that you can change into, right? Don't be afraid. If you're riding along and you don't like how it's going, swap it out. Right. Try something different. She hates doing that. I don't like she doing won't. that. She'll just struggle through and she'll be like, I'll just change it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world. I know, like to have to get off, change your equipment. But honestly, if it's not going well, just change, right? You're not, you're not yeah. married to your bit. You can just make an adjustment, right? Yes, you can. If you get on one for the day and they're jumping all over the place and you don't like where they're at, just change it, okay? So I want... Steady amount of pressure on this bit. I want that horse to sit in my hands. If he won't sit in this, I can back my bit up. Right. If he pushes against this, I can go the other way. Okay, and I can get a thinner twist on there. So having your horse in the middle as much as possible is a good, good problem to have, right? <clears throat> I want to be in the middle as much as possible. Okay, so that's what we're going for. Now, the other thing that somebody said the other day, yesterday, was is he over bridled, right? Yep. Dubs. And yes, he was over bridled yesterday, right? We were working on getting that out of there. But what we have to do is we have to get that horse to where he trusts my hands and he'll push on them, right? Yeah, he always used to like hide from us and like yep. get back here. Yep, so it's kind of like, like he's just floating in my hands, right? He's hiding his chin, the bit's somewhere up here, but he's further back than where the bit is. So he's not actually like against my bit, right? All right? So when I take a hold of my hands, if this is where my bit is and it comes into his mouth, I want to be able to control right here where his chin is. And what he's doing is my bit's right here, my pressure's right here, but he's staying back like this. Right. Do you see how his shoulder has all this room to get away from me? If I don't have that horse sitting on my hands, then his shoulders are going to run through, right? And I can't control him because right. his chin's back here. Right. Okay. So I got to have that horse where he'll sit in the bridle. So I would much rather have one that's too pushy than hiding. Okay, 
And usually what happens is you get a horse that starts off really pushy. Like peanut. <laughs> and they get made to hide by people being aggressive, right. right? So I'm gonna teach you guys how not to be aggressive with your hands, but still get the softness that we have in our horses, okay? Because that's huge. You gotta have your horse's chin. They gotta drive to the bridle. They gotta drive to the bit. You gotta be able to send your legs to their face. Right. You can't do that on a loose rein. No. That's called running. <laughs> okay. If your nose is out here and your horse doesn't know to keep his shoulders back, you're just running. Running away. Running away. All right. So we don't want that. So what I want to do is I want to talk to you guys a little Move bit about a little bit. how I use my hands and kind of the feel that I'm going for. Because I did it on a horse and I kind of talked on a horse about it, but yeah, just a little bit longer. I want you guys to understand. Yeah. Too far. Okay. So I want you guys to understand what it is I'm going for, okay? Broke horse keeps his chin right here and respects this drape, right? So if you have a buddy at home you can do this with, this exercise will teach you a lot about what it feels like for the person holding it, right? This is our horse, this is you riding, okay? If you have a buddy, this is a great exercise to teach you what it feels like when you use your hands. And maybe you'll have a little bit better appreciation for what it's like to be your horse, uh -huh. okay? <laughs> so. Most of the time when I see people riding and training, most of the time when I see them ride and train, they're riding on too loose of a rein. So they're training like this. Can they see the bottom of the reins? Want me to go down? Uh, yeah, let's come right here. There, okay, so, yeah. there. so see the bottom of my reins, right? So when I'm riding and I'm on a loose rein, my horse just kind of does this the whole time, right? So my horse is jogging along, take up a jog, and you're using your neck, right? So look, she's staying down her neck. Give me some bounce. Give me some unsteady, right? Okay, so right there, see those reins flopping around? Okay, any play that she does, she has in her head. That's this right here. Any play right there is gonna show up in your reins, okay? So give me some side to side. Give me some of this. No, you don't have to jog, just give me some side to side, okay? So see, this is what we're talking about when we have that horse that's broke loose in his pole, okay? So we have that horse that twists his head like this. Remember I said twisting our head like this was really bad. Well, what your guys' horses are doing if your reins are swinging left to right, as they are untracked in their head doing this. They're too loose right here. I don't really want my horse to be loose right there. No. Okay? So that's where I said that my nose ends up in a different place than my ears. Right. All right? Your ears are like over here. Your ears are over there, right? So my nose ends up in a different place than my ears. That's untracking your pole. Right. Okay? And that makes left to right movement in your reins. So if you set your hands down and you have this, your horse is too loose in his pole. Okay, see that left to right. What we want our reins to do is rock up and back to me, okay? So this horse should come up and back, right? So we're riding up and back, up and back, up and back. Do you see how those reins don't flop at all if you're like that? They stay in line right here like a train track, right? So if you can imagine your horse a little locomotive, right? He's doing this. That's how our horse should ride. He should ride straight ahead. If your reins are bouncing all over the place, you should probably just take that horse's head away from him, right? Because uh, yeah. he's using it way too much. So we're going to shut that down, right? <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have contact in our reins. It's really hard to train a horse on a loose rein. Really hard, okay? What we're trying to do is we're going to take away that horse's head and neck from him and teach him to do things off of his body, all right? So what you have to do is you have to get your horse where he's comfortable sitting in your hands, sitting on the bit, all right? So what I try to do is I try to maintain contact all the time. So when I'm riding, most of the time, I keep my hands really low like this. And you see where I have a straight rein from my hands to his face, all right? See that straight contact. I want some weight in the reins. So when I'm riding along, what happens is, like I'm gonna shuffle his neck down. So Mace's gonna drop her head and then I lock in, right? So that shuffle wide, left to right, into lock in right here, okay? So she's gonna lift her head up, see the slack come back into my reins. If I felt my horse lift away from my hands, I'm gonna come here, shuffle wide, drop him in, scoop and hold him in, right? So from here, I'm able to do a lot of things, but I have to maintain contact on both sides of his mouth. If I don't have contact on one side, look what I did to her hand. You see I turned it over? If you don't have contact on one side, and you turn your hand over, this is what you got. If you throw away one side of your horse's mouth and you pull the other side, you're gonna get this. And their shoulders are gonna come this way. Okay, so when I do that, I can get up to the close to the camera. So when I do that and I twist my head, 
Look at it does my shoulders. You see how everything rotates right here? Everything goes from straight like this to rotate, okay? So straight like this, twist their head, they rotate. That's like this, right? So that's what you're gonna end up with. If you come across here, you take your hands, I'll just sit right here in the middle. Just give me some weight on that bit. Just crouch down. There you go. So right here, if I just pull one rein, can you guys see how it twists that bit? So I'm creating that looseness in my pole. I'm twisting my horse's head, right? So when I just pull one rein, you're twisting their head and they're gonna dump this shoulder, okay? So that's why when you see me do my rib cage control stuff and I slide out here and I pull across here, I've gotta keep contact on the other side so I'm not rotating. Do you see how I keep everything balanced right there? Her hand is not allowed to rotate, okay? That's what I'm trying to create. Is a horse that doesn't rotate their pole. Rotating your pole is very bad. It's gonna offset your horse's ears. You end up with a horse's head that looks like this. You got one ear higher than the other. They're twisting their pole. Right. So when you look down your horse's mane, you should see mane to head, neck, and ears, <laughs> all right? If you see this, your horse is twisting. Look how I twist my elbow, right? He's twisting his head. If he's twisting his head, I promise you, he's dumping his shoulders, all right? And that's probably the biggest problem that I see with heads and yeah, necks, right? If that happens, you don't have any control over your horse's head and neck, yeah. right? You don't have any control over his shoulders. So you have to remember when you ride, especially in a snaffle, we have both shoulders in our hands, right? So the way that we ride, everybody's been in my clinics knows we're gonna slide down that rein. So here is where I'm I'm feeling for my rein length. Come on, go up there and do it. Yep. So right here, this is where I'm feeling for my rein length, okay? So I'm right here. I'm gonna close, open this hand, cover the reins right here, and pull up on the other hand, all right? So see how I don't move this one, just close this on the reins, pull up with your other hand. I'm left-handed, I ride my reins in my left hand, so I'm pulling up with this one. I'm not trying to reach forward for the reins, right? See how this takes my weight off? I'm leaning on over my horse's shoulders now, I'm all messed up, I'm gonna bring that horse to me, all right? Once I've brought that horse to me, I'll cover and slide down the reins, okay? So what that looks like in slow-mo or close-up, I'm right here, slide, close this, grab a hold, split, all right? When I split, I'm going palms open, okay? Rotate your wrists, palms open. That's gonna keep you pulling wide, okay? So right here from the front, I'm like this, I'm gonna slide, Cover, wide. Now I'm turning my wrists over. We say palms to the walls, okay? Turn your palms over like this because that's really hard to pull back like that. This is super awkward, okay? But if you ride like this, then I can keep everything square, okay? I can kind of balance off the tightness across here, right, in my loop, balance off the tightness and then go left to right. And that's gonna drop my horse's head and neck down, okay? From there, we're keeping contact on the reins and we're gonna go wide and scoop. Now I'm working that horse to me right here, All right? This is where I kept dubs when I was doing my lead changes. This is a horse that's in my hands. Yeah. This is what I'm looking for, right? See the tension in the reins, All right? So when I drop my horse's neck down, I'm gonna create tension in the reins right here. Create tension. I want her kind of sitting in my hands right here. See how tight the reins are. And then I would scoop, lock my horse in, and now I'm gonna do maneuvers. So that might be a side pass, right? Side pass this way, side pass this way. It might be lope up, right? And I want that horse to maintain the contact in my reins, maintain the tension in the reins. Because if she doesn't maintain the tension, right? I'm gonna drop her down, way down. We're gonna go lope off, so it looks like this. Now I've got her in my hand. She's nice and soft right there. I'm gonna lope off. If that neck comes up, look, I don't feel her in my hands anymore, right? You see how there's slack now? So I no longer have contact or connection to that horse. So if I lose the contact to this horse, then I don't have a line of communication to him anymore. No. All right? And that's gonna be really bad. So that horse is now calling the shots. So that's an easy way to tell, well, does my horse really roll up from underneath when he lopes off? I don't know, lope, drop him down, shuffle him up, lope off, right? If that head and neck shoots up into the air, like so, you're gonna get slack in the reins. So you'll know that horse is coming undone to lope off, right. right? That head and neck's coming undone to lope off. We don't want that, all right? That horse needs to stay down through every transition. So if I had my horse down right here, if I was to turn, looks like this, right? So I'll do that from the front so you guys can see. 
I'm right here. I'm going to turn like that. Okay. Turn back, turn straight back, turn straight. Get very comfortable doing this on the ground. Okay. Get really comfortable getting to where you can do this on the ground with your horse where you're right here, back, turn straight back, turn transition, right? This is where I would lope off or do something else. Notice it's not back around. It's not going to be right here. Drop down back, turn straight, lope off, right? You see, how I just threw that horse away. So all the weight that I reset back here through the back and then turn and kept him back on his back end and turn, kept him on his back end. I want to stay right here. I'm going to lope off. I'm loading that outside hind. I want to push up into the air, right? Push up with that back end. If he doesn't push up and lift himself off the ground because I gave him a way out that way right. by turning loose with my hands, he's going to run off, right. right? So that looks like here, shuffle my horse down. Oop, got my reins. <laughs> so here, shuffle down, wrap in, okay? I want to feel even contact. So you can have your ground person tell you, does that feel even in your hands? Because yeah. if it feels like this, That's not even. it's not even, right? And this is hard to find. So you want to be able to develop that feel in your hands, okay? Where you can ride right here and say, okay, now I'm a shuffle, now I'm a shuffle. The other piece of that, if you have somebody at home to help you out, let's rotate this back up. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. All right, too far. <laughs> the other piece of that, yeah. when you're riding along, okay, hold this in. That's my horse at the end of my reins, right? And you can have somebody help you out with this if you need to. Give me just a little bit more, okay? So now, she's riding along. On a loose rein, right? If I bump her, oh, geez. right? <laughs> yeah. Gee, like, oh, geez, right. That's absolutely what happens with our horse, right? If I bump, she doesn't oh. feel it coming. It's a ton of jerk, right? Look yeah, how much right. my arm has to move, right? Look how, are you gonna brace your arm up? Yeah. You're gonna get stiff, aren't you? Right? So a lot of people bump and bang like that, trying to soften their horse up. Look what it does to them. I don't right? like it. She's going, no, I'm going to get, yeah, see, she's going to get stiff on me. She's going to start pulling against me. Okay. Yeah. So what we want to do, we want to teach you guys to do is get contact so you can ride in your fingertips. Okay. Because when you ride in your fingertips with a tight rein like this, this is a lot of pressure. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of leverage. Okay. It's certainly more leverage, yeah, it's than, more leverage than riding with your fingertips like this, Yeah. right? You can't hardly feel that at all, right? Especially if I had more rain out there. If I let my chin go further and I had more rain out there, let my chin go. There you go. If I let my chin no. go further, right? Then I, I just did this. My horse is not going to know what this means. No. no idea. All right. So we want to make sure that we get contact on their mouth. We ride close to their mouth. And we work from here because this little wiggle, you guys can't hardly see what's happening, right? All I'm doing is this. Look, that's all I'm doing. But if the reins are tight, go closer. The reins are tight. This little wiggle, look how much that moves her. All right. So I want you guys to really understand that I'm riding out of my pinky or my third finger, but because my reins are tight, I get a lot of leverage out of it. Okay. And the other cool piece about that is if my reins are tight, then I can feel when she gives to it right away, right. right? So right here, I can kind of work her hand to me. She gives, I can give back, and we can go back to sitting, okay? Now, if she was to take it away from me, I'm gonna wiggle, right? And now I'm gonna go to her belly. <laughs> I'm gonna make her give no. her belly. So if she keeps leaning on me, I'm gonna go to her belly. I'm not gonna keep beating her face up, right? But I wanna make sure I can come here, get her backed off, and then say, okay, now you can sit. Right. So light contact. I want that horse lightly sitting in my hands like that. Light tension. Now, if she's pulling the reins out of my hands, I'm gonna let her take it, right? Oh. So I did it, I just turned loose because I'm not gonna out-muscle this horse, right? See how there's nothing to pull on? Yeah, so yeah. she's like, wait, where'd you go? Right? Oh, and what I'm gonna do, that's weird, isn't it? Weird. So rather than like, I got tight contact here, if that horse was to pull on me, I'm gonna let it go. You take it because I'm going to her belly then and I'm making her move because where she's trying to go is that way, yeah. right? So you get a horse that wants to pull on you out here, Go to the rib cage, because I promise you, if you go to a rib cage and she's trying to pull on you, go ahead. She's trying to lean on me, come back up, okay? She's trying to pull and lean, and I go to her belly. See how she had to quit pulling? Same thing with your horse, okay? If you have a tight contact and your horse trying to take the reins out of your hands, 
go to their belly <laughs> and make a move. And then they can't lean that way anymore. No, you can't lean. You can't lean at all, right? So that secret to getting your horse's face off is right here. Right. All right. You are never going to outmuscle your horse. No. Right? Never. <laughs> Keep in mind, he wants to take you where he's going to win. Right? Horses are not dumb. Right? Just like people, they're going to take you where they can win. Macy's not going to try to arm wrestle me to win an argument. No. <laughs> right? No so, way. So our horse is going to take us where he thinks he can win. If I got a horse that thinks he's big and strong, he's going to try to outmuscle me. If I got a horse that thinks he's real agile, he's going to try to outrun me. Yeah. Right? I'm never going to have that big, strong horse try to outrun me. No. Right? But that big, strong horse will try to outmuscle me. Right. Okay? That nervous horse is going to take you and run you somewhere. Right. That bold horse is going to take you and run you into a wall. Right? So that horse wants to go where he thinks he's going to win. Okay? So beat him up by the one area he's never going to win. Get in his head. Right? right? Make him think. Because he'll be a great athlete, but he'll never be a good Einstein. No. Right? No. <laughs> so get in his head and you'll wear him out way quicker and he'll learn his stuff way quicker. But the problem that most people run into is they've got horses that are good debaters. They do. Right? Yeah. They got horses that are good people trainers that have figured out, well, if I get big, my owner will back off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If I get big, I already got that person figured out yep. and they'll back off and I win that argument. Right. right? So he knows he's always got that in his back pocket. You can always just play that card and be like, oh, yeah, but you're scared of this. And you lose, right? That's the problem most people run into. So that's why I'm saying get control of your horse's middle because that takes away most of his ability to argue. Okay? And because most of his ability to argue is strength-based. Right here. That's most of his ability to argue. You ever had one of those horses where you're riding and the, the veins are popping out in your arms and you're just riding right here like this. and this is what your ride looks like and you're just... Riding a lot. That's not what we're looking for. <laughs> right? That's not exactly the softness that we're talking about. Right? So what you want to do if you're riding like that and your horse goes to do that stuff, give oh, it to geez. him. <laughs> See that? He's like, oh, where'd he go? Right? Give it to him. And then slide wide, take his body away, and go after his belly. Right. Okay? And you'll notice that the, the most common area you'll notice that is when your horse goes to stop. <laughs> right? Yeah. Everybody ever been riding your horse along? Right? They're riding and they're loping and it looks really good. And then they go to, whoa. And that horse just pulls them up over the saddle. Oh, <laughs> that horse pulls them up over the saddle. Right? So make sure, give it to them, right? And she just fell right on her butt. <laughs> right? So making sure that you give that horse, give it to them. Don't try to muscle them. Right? Is this still good? <laughs> Because the one that's out muscling is going to win, right? I think I won that one. So give it to them, okay? Let them have that. Take it away from them and go after their belly, okay? So contact on the reins is huge. Get connected to your horse's mouth. The other piece that is, when you bang your horse, right? If I'm just doing this the whole time, and say I did this. Say I was committed to doing this to where my horse got really soft, right? And I'm just banging and banging and banging and banging and banging and banging until my horse got to me, right? Now she's gonna hide, okay? So go ahead and just hide, yep. So now when I bang, it does nothing. See how this horse is like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep my chin right here. Fine. You don't really feel anything right here. Fine, whatever, I'll just keep my chin in. See how this doesn't feel anything, right? This is where these horses are. So you can just, and she feels nothing. Oh, this is fine. <laughs> this, is, this is nice. This is nice. Right? But if you had your chin out, this sucks. That hurts. This hurts. It's a right? lot. But it's, it, you're, so your horses have learned, oh, I'll just tuck my chin under. Right? I'll just fold my chin in. Now it feels fine. This is nice. <laughs> this is really nice. Right? So what we have to do with these horses is we have to get close to their mouth. So this is Dubs, right? He was hiding from my bit, so I had to get really close, super tight rein, and teach him to pull on my hands so I could get his neck stretched back out. You see how much longer my reins are? That's his neck flattening out, coming down here. Your horse's necks are super short. They're doing this. Right. They've made their necks really short because they're hiding their chin from you, okay? So we want to make sure we stretch that horse down into the bit. See how much longer my top line is now? That's the big difference, okay? So getting that horse on your hands is huge. Right. All right? So what about the lazy horse? Yeah, that's going to be getting your horse to where he gets up and gets excited off stuff. Right. All right? So we'll talk a little bit about legs. 
That's my reins. Any questions about reins? Questions about that before we go on? Shut it down. You're right. <laughs> Ow, my boat's full of sand. <laughs> full of sand. <laughs> Took a little tumble there. I did. A spill. <laughs> I was expecting you to come over the top. That's a butt print right there in the sand. <laughs> that is a Macy butt print. <laughs> she fell off. I was, I was expecting you to like <laughs> drop the reins. That's what your horses are not going to expect it either. Oh, here we go. What we got? Um, Hard to see with the pin comment. Yes. Touched on the lazy horse doesn't want to go yesterday and said to bounce your seat and not use your feet. How much? How hard? One rain stops, I bring his head around at the walk. I lose all forward. Yeah, okay. All right. So we can demonstrate that with Peanut when we get her out here in just a little bit. Okay, perfect. Good. Glad you're liking the videos. Awesome. Yay! <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to talk a little bit about your legs now. Okay, so we talk touch base on your hands. We're all gonna be better handed to our horses. We're all gonna be much kinder, right? Ride right here your in fingers. your fingertips. If you are riding out of your elbow or your shoulder, this is a long way from the show pen, okay? Get your horses where you're soft first. Oh, here. What you have to think of when you're a young horse, when you're working with a young horse, is you've gotta think that they're gonna start out super stiff and super straight, like this. We wanna get them loosened up so that they let us take a hold and help them and then stiffen them back up in the correct position. Right. That's your mission, okay? So your horse starts out really stiff, really straight on both sides, get him loosened all up everywhere, then teach him this is the correct position, get him stiff right here again, all right? So you're gonna do that, getting him wide first on your young horse, get everything moving around, get all these pieces soft and supple, and then take your horse, stiffen him back up right here so you can show him right like this, okay? That's where you wanna end up, all right? So, your legs on your horse's sides. This is a big one for us. Come this way. Okay, we talked the other day about how our legs wrap around that horse. Here's my calves, here's my spurs. I ride connected all the time so I can feel little problems. You probably can move a little closer. Yeah. Not far away. Yeah. So I can feel little problems. If you're riding with your upper leg really far away, see how she's got lots of room to bounce around. So we talked yesterday about how I ride with my hands wide and my legs close. Hands wide, legs close, okay? That's why I had my hands low, because it let me get my hands wider than my legs. So I'm holding her right here between my legs, holding her up, right? <laughs> All the time, holding her up. So I work my hands out here. <laughs> this is a neat little puppet demo right here, right? So holding my hands out wide, but I'm riding really close with my legs to keep this belly elevated all the time, okay? <laughs> we gotta keep that belly elevated because we don't wanna get to where we're riding and we lose our middle. That's riding with your hands closer than your legs. And this is super common, right? People get their legs too far away from their horse. I can go down a little bit. Down a little bit? Yep. So people get their, their legs too far away from their horse and they ride in between their reins. Well, that's all fine and good until you go to show that horse and you give him a bunch of room and he's got lots of room between your legs and now your horse gets to just pinball around yeah. those corners, Not right? So that's gonna be just this horse this is what it feels like when you're loping a horse down a rail that does not stay between your hands and feet, right? Or that doesn't respect the lanes that we've been giving him, right? So Macy's loping straight ahead. We lope straight ahead. Yep, and you're just gonna bounce between, you're gonna have to like lope in place kind of. Okay. And she's gonna lope and she's gonna bounce between the walls right here. This is how you guys are showing your horses, <laughs> right? You're just loping along down that fence and you have to keep catching over here and catch over here <laughs> and catch over here, right? We wanna ride close. So our horse lopes straight, straight ahead, down the rail. That's what we want it to look like, right? So everything flies straight at you, okay? So when I'm doing my rib control stuff, when I've got my horse between my hands and feet, like we're saying so much on here, that's what it feels like. I ride that horse, I lope him, and he stays right here in the lane that I'm making, right there, okay? So what happens is if your lane, your rule book is really wide, He's just gonna bounce off one side or the other the whole time. That's why we're talking about riding close with your hands and close with your feet. So when you watch me ride any of the horses that we ride, that's what I really want you to focus on is how am I riding close with my hands and feet, okay? The other thing that we touched base on with the lead changes was the, the three strides, right? right? The lift, lift, lift. And we said, if your timing isn't right, and you don't have up and down in your saddle, in your lope, 
you're, you're going to have a heck of a time teaching that horse anything. Right. Because spurring him at the wrong time just makes him mad. Makes him really mad. Really mad, okay? An example we give people all the time is I'm going to have Macy lope across the frame here. So go ahead, take up a left lead. Good, so there's your left lead loping around, okay? Come back around. Give me a flat left lead back across there. No lift. Okay, this is what our horses feel like. Do you see how there's no up and down in her stride? Ooh, that was okay? good. That was good, that was nice and flat. So people ask me about the four beating horse, right? That's what it feels like. There's no lift in your seat. There's no lift in your horse, all right? It just kind of shuffles right here. It just jitters along, yep. all right? So that lift is literally like, if you can watch me on that dubs horse doing my lead changes, I'm coming up out of the saddle, right? That's literally, if she lopes that left lead, see that lift? Lifts me up, right? Lifts me up and she picks me up again, carries me to the next stride, sets me down. Picks me up again, carries me to the next stride, sets me down. That's what our horse should do. That's lift. If your lope does not have lift, go faster. Right? Take him up on a circle and go a little bit faster so that horse got to pick his shoulders up, right? So he's got to start picking his body up. If you're loping your horse, it just feels like you're jittering along right here. This is not lifting. So your lope is staying really flat. It's not a cycle. Send it through on the bottom, rock back, send it through on the bottom, okay? So if you don't have lift in your horse, then you're going to have a hard time knowing when to spur him. Right when to bring your legs in, all right? What we wanna do is make lift because then it's so much easier to know when you should bring your leg in. Because if she's lifting, I can feel when I should be spurring her, right? I can feel how this lope does this. We've said a bunch of times, it doesn't do us any good to spur our horse when their weight is on the ground. Down here. When they're down, right? For the same reason that when we go to pull their head around and do our pivots, they move the lightest part of their body, right? If you're standing here and everybody can do this at home, right? You guys are watching this. Put your weight evenly on both feet. Pick up your left leg, okay? Now, we said a bunch of times, we're gonna bend our horse's neck and use his body against him, right? So in this position, all of my weight is on my right foot, okay? That one. <laughs> all of my weight's on my right foot, right? Just watch him. <laughs> So I am free to move the lightest part of my body. My left leg is free to move, right? We're doing yoga. Yoga, right? My left leg is free to move. Get up on that right foot again, okay? Now move your right leg. Move it right over here. Y'all wanna know why your horses jump through your turns, right? Why do they leap through their lope offs? Because they have to, to make that move, right? So if I'm asking him to pivot, he doesn't have his weight on his back end where his front legs are free to do something, right. then he's gonna have to jump to get around there. Right. He's gotta take his weight off of it. So what's he gonna do? Flip his head up, jump over there, and set his weight down. Yep. It means he's got his weight on his front end. If your horse goes to lope off and he does this and flips his head up to lope off, he's got his weight on the front end, okay? So we wanna create a horse that uh, that we understand and he understands, we're gonna use your body. If I want her to move this leg, I'm gonna bend her back like this. Now that leg is free to move, right? Same thing for showmanship or whatever, that leg is free to move. I'm not gonna ask for this leg to move can't. because she's got her weight on it, all right? So what we find sometimes is when I take that horse head to the side and I ask for rib control, so I'm gonna bend her around, I take her head this way, this should put all your weight where? on this leg over here, right? So see how she's got all her weight on the left front leg? Remember I said we do that rib control move and then we lope off on the right lead, right? Yeah. So you see how that's gonna take the weight off of your inside front, put it on the outside so you can lope right here? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna put that weight on the outside legs which are designed to push up when you lope. Right. Okay, so literally what that move is, Macy's loping along, she's falling into the inside, she's getting too much weight on the inside. Like this, see how she's falling, okay? And this is what that horse looked like yesterday, right? I was riding and falling down. Yeah. So what we do is we say, you're gonna fall like this, I'm gonna push you like this, put your weight on the outside, see her weight's on the left leg, 
and then lope her off from there. See how she stands up a little harder? If she were to fall over again, I'm gonna push her out, put her weight on the outside. Where's her weight? Get on the left leg. <laughs> Stand on that left. I am. Swing that leg around. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So the weight on the left leg, and then lope off from there. See how she can push up? So redistribute it's that weight. Being a horse. And lope off. It's a lot of work, isn't it? It is a lot of work. Right? So that's literally what that is, right? I'm riding along and I feel my horse falling over here. I feel that either by my saddle tilting, and that horse dropping his shoulder, or the heaviness in that rein. Yes. Right? Because most of the time- a lot of times you can't get your inside leg on either. Yeah, yep. So the most of the time that horse got big old bend in his body like this, and he's leaning out like this. And you can't get your inside leg on right here. Yep, because it's just kind of hidden in this divot like, like that. Like a little C right here. So yep. your inside leg is kind of free. Yep. So what we want is we want that horse to straighten his body out, get his weight centered. So I've got 70% on the inside, 30% on the outside. My horse is loping around like this. So we are quite literally going to side pass him to put his weight over here so he can lope off in the correct position, okay? That's literally the body mechanics of doing that, all right? So we'll, well, questions there, questions about that. Does that make sense? Did we get peanut butter? Yeah, probably. But let's do uh, let's do a little bit of um, uh, disperse up. When to spur? Oh. Yep. So that's what we're doing. That's that rib control stuff. Okay. So when we spur is when our horse lifts, lift into the air. Okay. So if I spur her, I have my legs wrapped close, and I spur her when she's going down, I am not going to be able to muscle her up. Right. Imagine Macy weighs 1,200 pounds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nothing that I'm going to do from her belly is going to pick up 1,200 pounds. Okay. So she's loping along. If I spur now, 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 you see how she just falls out of my hands? Yep. So she lopes back across here. I'm going to spur at the top right here. She just falls through my hands. I can't hold her up. There's no way I'm be able to hold her up. But if you spur when she's lifting into the air, you can influence her stride. Okay. okay? So that difference is, when she's on the ground, low, now, now, I can pick her up a lot. Low back cross there. So right here, down, lift, lift, back cross, <laughs> lift, lift. So much easier to pick her up. It's nice too. <laughs> and it's nice for her, right? So think about that lift in your horse's belly. If you don't have lift, it's hard. you don't know when to spur. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah. There's no timing to your lope. The timing literally comes from the lift up into the air. Right. Otherwise, it's just four legs running flat. Yeah, you don't really know which one's going off yep. the ground or which one's pushing off or anything like that. Yep. So in your seat, you got to find this motion. Okay. It rocks up and back okay. and slides through. Up and back, slides through. Okay. So that's that lift into the air. See the up and down. Got to have it. Okay. Yeah. Can I grab peanut? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me grab me before you leave. Grab me those tires. Perfect. So I'll take some questions here while she gets peanut, if we have any. Awesome. Glad you're enjoying the videos, guys. Type of mid length and range. So for me, not weighted. If I'm gonna weight my reins, I want to weight the tails. All right, so I do have a pair of reins that are weighted. Some of my reins are thicker at the end than at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. I want the weight in the tails because that sits really nice on my horse, right? Because um, I don't want the tails flopping around. So if I have to weight my reins, if I had to choose, I'm gonna choose weighted tails and not weighted by the bit, all right? Because that weight by the bit, if that horse isn't right, that's just more weight slinging around up there, right? And it's gonna pull that horse off even more. Okay, but for me, um, length of reins doesn't so much matter. If my reins are too long, I just tie a loop in them. Um, if my uh, reins are too thick though, I hate that. I hate riding in thick reins. So these are pretty good right here. You can see not too thick. They're a little bit wide right here. I wouldn't mind seeing them be a little less wide, um, a little bit thinner, but I want something that I can work my fingers through, right? and be really easy to move around my hands. Cause like, you'll see, I'll be riding and I'll have this like all twisted up around my hand. 
right? So like, that's not a bad position for me because I got that reins in my hand, right? So if I have a hold of my horse and I can't get it, I don't have a problem looping through like that or walking my fingers down like that, right? So what that was, taking right here, walking through, right? And I can do that if my reins are tight, okay? So right here, I can do this move if I'm tight and stay tight to their mouth, okay? So right here, so I can keep that going and keep pulling closer to their face. And I can just turn loose, okay? Good. Lift gives you some of the slow, how you encourage them to hold the ground. So that's gonna be tighter circles, okay? So lift is one thing, right? But hold the ground is the other. And that's gonna be taking that, like that trot circle that we did yesterday, makes them hold the ground on this leg, okay? So I was trying to explain it while I was doing it, it's kind of hard. So what I was literally asking that horse to do is step and swing around. So it should be step, swing, step, swing, step, swing, step, swing, step, swing. Do you see how long this leg has to sit on the ground when I do that? So if I'm working on my jog, I can make him hold the ground over here and swing this leg around. So he's gotta open his chest up and get loose with his legs and stand on this one, right? So by the same token, I can make him stand on this leg right here, stand, swing, stand, swing, stand, swing, stand, swing, right? So I can redistribute that horse's weight, make him hold the ground. So that's gonna be some tighter circles, right? I might be loping and do kind of the same thing, make him sit on those back legs. So I'm loping around, turn up and over, sit on that back end. See, I have to really stand and push off this leg to make that corner. So I'm gonna sit over his butt, lope straight, sit over his butt and make him shift back, okay? So both of those maneuvers. Most of the time, if he's not holding the ground long, this guy's waiting in the wrong spot. Remember when he lopes, you want him to be 70, 30 as a right lead, okay? So if it was inside legs should carry 30% of the weight, outside legs should carry 70%. So I want my horse to lope around like this because I can control his side with this outside leg and not get busted by a judge if I had to choose one, okay? All right. I'm breathing hard now. Good. All right, so. We got Peanut here. How long have we been going? 5.30? Okay, do you want to do the leg wraps? Yeah. Yep, that'd be good. So we had a couple questions. Did you bring the leg wraps? I'm going to grab them right now. Okay. 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 I had a couple questions about groundwork and stuff like that. Um, we're going to go into a little bit of that today. Um, this is Peanut. You guys know Peanut. She's brought some trail mix. <laughs> That's nice. Um, so what I want to do is I want to talk to you guys about how I wrap legs, my reasoning behind it. Um, and just so everybody's on the same page about what it is we're doing when we wrap legs, what we're trying to do and what we can't do, or at least what I think we can't do, right? Because I think leg wraps have a lot of limitations. So for me, when I wrap legs, I mostly wrap for two reasons. One, protection, all right? Protection from stepping on themselves. That I think is the biggest one. And two, to keep their tendons warm. So I'm gonna wrap legs to protect their legs and to keep their tendons warm. So that decreases the amount of time I need to warm up because that tendon should stay warm. And it, uh, it keeps that tendon warm through my ride. So I don't have to worry about pulling things because if that tendon's warm, it's gonna be more flexible. Right. Okay, so warming that horse up will go a little bit faster and um, I don't have to worry about it hurting <laughs> itself. So if you guys have wondered why in some of my videos, the live little. videos, they're wrapped up front because I don't get to do as long a warm up as I normally would. Because right. I'm on camera, right? So I don't just do the long warm up because you guys get bored after 20 minutes of walking, <laughs> <laughs> right? So you guys would get out of just be like, oh, okay, well, there's nothing I want to talk about, right? So I don't want you guys to be bored. So we wrap their legs so that they can be heated up a little bit faster, right? Okay. We use the back on track leg wraps too. A lot of the time, yep. If I'm going to wrap at a horse show, the majority of the time, I am not going to wrap them during my ride, but I will standing wrap and poultice at night. Overnight, yep. Overnight. All right, so if you guys are ever using standing wraps and poultice, I'm a huge fan. Every one of our horses overnight gets poulticed up. We usually poultice their hocks all the way down that back tendon, um, all the way down the back tendons of their fronts, right? That deep digital, uh, poulticing that up. And then I do a standing wrap overnight, right? right? Quilt plus wrap, yep. okay? Quilt plus polo or nylon or whatever. Right. So standing wrap overnight with poultice, I think is one of my favorite things to do. It takes inflammation out, keeps them comfortable overnight, lets them rest up good. Um, but I don't want to like keep them standing wrapped all day. Right. 
and like it's 12 hours on, 12 hours off. So you either pick overnight or during the day at the show. And it would kind of be one of those things where if I have a horse that's kind of uncomfortable on his front feet, I'm probably going to stand and wrap him during the day. Right. But that horse would probably also get a pair of the uh, soft rides. We did like these ice things on Marley's front legs. Yep. I heard what those are called. They're like wraps and then you put like these little ice bags in them. Yeah. And like these little yep. slats and you wrap yep. around her front legs. I'll have to then, find them. See what, yeah, they what they were. I think they were, they were, uh, I think they were ice. Uh, no, they were from the same people that make the soft rides. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. Maybe not. I I'll find them. Up. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I like those a lot. So just keeping that those legs, that swelling out of those legs. Horse shows are hard, they right? Are hard. My horses, when we go to horse shows, they get butte or banamine or something like that. Because I want to keep them comfortable. These guys are athletes. No different than me when I'm watching a football game and the guy gets carted off the field, he goes down the tunnel, he gets an injection, comes back out. They're athletes, it's game day, right? I want to keep them as comfortable as possible. So <laughs> when we go to horse shows, we usually have more horse than we had at home. Our horses are usually more comfortable at horse shows than they were at home, which is how we get that extra like 10% out of them, all right? So let's have Macy take the wheel here. Yeah, I'm gonna have one holder and then I'll bring the gimbal down there. Yeah. She'll begin. Yeah, let's do that. Ooh, she's lazy. Yeah. <laughs> Here's this. Here's these. Perfect. And then I'll grab this right here. You can come over to the fence. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the key to wrapping a leg, a good wrap leg, is a tight roll, okay? I hate seeing this be loose and it's too big to manage, doesn't fit in your hands. So wrap this tight, all right? So when I come down this leg, I come down, just kind of run your hand along their leg. I'm gonna take the end of my wrap and hold it, if I'm on their left side, hold it in my left hand, gonna put it around the middle of their leg. Now she is pretty short-legged, <laughs> so I'm gonna put this more towards the top. If I have a horse with a longer cannon bone right here, I'm gonna put it in the middle. I'm gonna take this right here in my hand, wrap it and tuck it with my fingers on the other side, okay? You gotta move her over a little bit so you can see it from the front. See what my other hand's doing? Or Mason, move over, so just back around with the fence so we can move around. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking this hand, gotta stand on it, okay? Taking my fingers and tucking them into the groove right there. Can you see the other side? Just like this, okay? So see how I open up my other fingers? I'm gonna take my wrap and wrap underneath my first finger like that, all right? Then I can come around that same spot, pull across the front, wrap around that same place. Now I'll start going down a little bit at a time. These wraps are pretty long. She's got pretty short legs. So I go around, I go about the same distance every time. When I get around the front, I'm gonna go under her ankle. Two wraps under the ankle. So here's one, now two. Back up over the ankle, right here. Back up over the top, back up over the top. And then I finish at the top, right there. Okay, so any extra that I have, I'm just gonna finish at the top. I'm not gonna go back down the leg, okay? So see how that puts a little V right there? If you have the V in front, good job, did awesome. If not, keep practicing. But <laughs> see how low I wrap? Because I think that this has gotta get below her ankle in order to keep this protected right here. I think one of the big problems that I run into is this horse gonna step on her front feet because we make her do a lot of crossing over. So I don't have a problem getting low right here, okay? A lot of people just finish right there, they don't go below the ankle. And I wanna support all of that, all right? So I'll do the other leg. <laughs> she used to hate getting her legs wrapped. Yeah. <laughs> we had to work on that for a long time. So right here, I'm gonna switch. Now the tail goes in my right hand, I'm on her right side. So I start with my right hand, right? Right side, hold it in your right hand. Left side, hold it in your left hand. That'll keep you wrapping the right way, okay? So right here, wrapping this. Again, I'm gonna start with her at the top, right here, tuck this into this groove right here, wrap this around. The main reason why I'm really particular about right side, right hand, left side, left hand, is because you wanna pull and rotate those tendons toward her midline. You see how when I pull across here, it's rotating those tendons toward her midline? I don't wanna go backwards and pull her tendons away from her midline. So I'm coming here, I'm at her ankle now, so I'm gonna go underneath her ankle, underneath, now back up, right there. Back around, 
back around, pulling across the front, back around, all this extra stays at the top, all right? And you'll get to know your horse and your leg wraps to where you can stay so you don't have a big bulge up here and it stays really even and smooth. So you see both of these wraps, I got a little too much up here, maybe one roll too much, that's okay, right? But I go all the way up underneath her knee, all the way down below her ankle, all right? So protecting all of this down here. I don't like to do just this. If I did just this on this horse, that wrap would be this thick, right? <laughs> She's got not very long legs. These are really long wraps, okay? But these are back on tracks. So making sure that you wrap this evenly down her leg is really important to me. And again, you can see the little V's up front, right where I want them, right? So right there, little V right here. And then on this side, little V almost perfectly in the middle. Right? So there's that little, where it comes together, it comes underneath. That's two wraps underneath her ankle. All right. And then we have a couple questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, should we wrap every time we ride? No, 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 no. Don't wrap every time you ride because what I've found is my horses tend to get reliant on their leg wraps. So then when I don't have them wrapped, they tend to pick up a bunch of knee because they're like, where did that weight go? <laughs> right? And they just end up high stepping all the time. So don't wrap your horse's legs every time. Um, again, like, for our daily workouts on a regular basis, I don't really wrap very often. Um, I don't want that horse to become dependent on the comfort of those leg wraps, right? So I don't wrap every time, but um, usually horse shows I'll wrap, um, the week of the horse show I'll wrap, stuff like that. Question? Wrap all ages of horses? Yep, all ages. And front and backs, right? Front and backs, same deal with your back end, tuck that finger, wrap towards your midline, make sure you're wrapping that way. Um, Again, just keeping that horse as comfortable as you can. This is a high-powered athlete, right? So I'm gonna treat him like a high-powered athlete. The football players at the end of the game get an ice bath, they get all that stuff. So if I'm at a horse show, end of the day, or after my ride, take them apart, take them over to the, the wash rack and run some cold water over their legs for a while, right? Ice those legs down. They'll, they'll feel better, they'll be more comfortable. And I think when you get to the horse show, if you've done your homework, the horse show is just a matter of keeping your horse really comfortable and happy. That's the key to success. Keep your horse comfortable and happy. Another question? Yep. What's your opinion on polos versus boots? I don't like boots yeah, personally. Yeah, I don't either. I just don't. Um, I think they're clunky. I think the horses end up moving funny because of them because there's a lot of weight and stuff yeah, slopping around. Yeah, I think there's a lot of weight on them. Yep. It's just and It just looks sloppy to me. Um, I don't love them. Plus, um, I think that you can get like with your, your polos, you can get a little tighter and a little more secure. And it gives them a lot more support too, yep, I think. Yep. I think it keeps them warmer. I think it keeps everything tighter. Um, I just think the boots get sloppy, personally. Yep. Other yep. questions or are we good? Do you guys have any other questions? Um, if not, how long have we been? Can you, do you have a way of seeing how long I've been? Uh-uh, I don't. I don't know what time we started. Not until we end. I have no idea. Bonnie. Bonnie, how? <laughs> Bonnie, <laughs> um, how long have we been live? Do we have time to ride? Do we need to ride? Would you guys like to see us ride today or? We can do the same thing just under saddle so you can see it. It's probably not a bad idea. No, here. Hold okay. this real quick, mom. Saddle her up. And then we'll saddle her up. You say hi, Peanut. Say hi. 59 minutes we've been live. Okay, that's about an hour. Yeah. Thanks, Bonnie. You're the best. <laughs> we need to put like a timer or something out here. Yep. Here, we'll turn it this way. I'm gonna hold her. Is it turned, honey? We'll turn it in a second. Okay. You look so pretty, peanut butter. Are you bring it over here? Yeah. Okay. Should I be a little fresh? Yeah. Probably. That would be nice. Oh, I can turn it around. She won't. She won't. We got her breath. Maybe. She's like, oh. She snorts at me. Do you have a little bit? No. I'll just ride it. Just we can ride rodeo, it. Rodeo it out if we have to, right? Just wear off. Put me that bridle real quick. Thank you. Here you go. I'm going to go to the video for my mom. Okay. Okay.
<laughs> so I know our rib control video was kind of far away. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit closer view. How tight do you wrap? Pretty tight, pretty tight. Um, but only tight across the front, right? So if you're using that finger method and you're always going down about the width of a finger, right, I don't know, about half inch, right? Yeah. If you're always going down that far, then you're gonna end up with a pretty tight leg wrap, right? But the key is don't go tight, like, and bind her ankle up. Make sure you get across above her ankle and then go below, wrap a couple times, and come work your way back up. Yep. All right. Aw, she's so cute. <laughs> All right, don't bug me off. Yeah. She loves to be a little frisky when you get on. <laughs> always, always a little bit wild when we first get on. That's okay. Well, of course, never really like staying still. Nope, here we go. <laughs> Round and around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, she's still a horse. Oh, right, did you guys spray there. her? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. <laughs> she's still a horse. Sitting on the <laughs> Hey. Let me walk this out real quick. All right. Real gentle with your feet when you first get on. Right? <laughs> yes. This one's because you're back up, though. It's to get your back up. So it's good to ride your horse fresh every now and then. Hopefully, we don't get bucked off. But... See where I'm not going to jab her with my feet, right? <laughs> she is saucy. She's still in there. It's still feet time. <laughs> She does. Alright. Good. So, now, so now, do you see that saddle was up off her back right there? I think. Got this little dog house right back here. We want our horse to stay tight right there. They got to use this piece. Hopefully not to buck you off, right? But hopefully to move themselves around the arena. So getting your horse to where they'll engage that piece but not buck you off is really important, okay? So taking that horse and, and making them do something constructive with that piece of their body. So they're not just gonna come out here and buck me off, right? And that's where we kind of ride the good off our horses. We let that piece fall and get flat and get abrasive. I don't want that. So now I'm riding her along. Here's my loose rein, there's my nose out. Slide, can't do that. Drop in, lock in, okay? So I'll, I'll ride a little bit of the, the rough off first. We'll just push her out. See, I'm gonna keep my hands low, stay connected. Low and connected. That's what you guys like, right? We ride live horses. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret to our success. We she definitely is sassy. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably one of the sassiest little ponies you've ever had. Oh, yeah. She's got a little attitude. Fire. We love her, though. Edgy. <laughs> we'll, we'll find the peanut round pen video for you guys. <laughs> We'll show you what we started with at this one. <laughs> she is very sweet. Very sweet. Just, just uh, a lot of engine on this one. So, now I'm getting the horse on my spurs a little bit. See, I'm just warming her up, bend her around. I'm gonna bend her this way, push her over. Right here, see me slide down that rein, keep it low, push her over. So remember we talked about this is supposed to put her weight on her right front leg there. Put her weight on her right front leg. So I'm gonna try to circle so Macy can see it. I'll come around again. Come in the middle of your hand. So if this is a regular circle, they're heading in the middle, right? Regular circle, head in the middle, you gotta get in front. Yeah. <laughs> or make Macy run backwards today. Okay. Oh boy, I already uh, fell once. So just come this way, come this way. Okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. So regular circle, head neck in the middle, right? What I want to be able to do is slide down this rein, take her head, see how she tried to keep her body straight? See what she did right there was I was on my circle. Look how straight she is in her body. Now my circle should have been over here. So if my horse was flexible right here, then I would have ended up facing here like this. It's her body that's got to stay on the circle, right? So what that should have looked like is Macy went go in front of me now. I should have been tracking on a circle right here. Do you see how her chest is where I'm supposed to be going? But what she tried to do is not let me get flexibility right here. She tried to take this piece away from me. And that's exactly what I was talking about. She tried to go from here on her circle to here, kicked over straight. And see, I'm trying to make her stay here, but bend and flex, but stay on your body 
on the circle because that's between my feet, right? My feet can hold her on the circle and I can bend her head and neck around. So I'll do that on a walk so you can see it. So here is her neck to the side and her body on my circle. That's gonna take both legs. You see how both legs have to stay close? So I want her body to walk on my circle and be able to take her neck in any position I want, right? But I know this horse likes to fall into the inside of the circles and most of your horses will too. So getting your horse off of this inside leg and pushing them out of the circle so that you can ride them straight right here is the key. I wanna ride her straight between my feet, but flexible right here. She's gotta be able to bend, okay? And that's what she doesn't want to do. So if I come around here, that's what I want my horse to look like. See how she's maintaining the contour of my circle all on her own. Then I slide. See how she's trying to go and twist her body. So I had to catch her on the left and right side to keep her from falling that way, but don't fall in either and follow your neck around, right? Keep everything elevated. Now what I wanna feel is I wanna feel the same amount of horse on both sides. So see me tapping my feet, trying to get the same amount of horse on both legs. If I feel like my saddle's twisted or my horse is not balanced between my feet, I'll just kind of stay bumping, trading her back and forth. So just like we rode yesterday, and we rode with one leg tapping, one leg holding, right? One rein holding, one rein tapping. Right here, my right rein is holding, my left rein is tapping. And Macy, if you want to get in front of her this way, get in front of her head. See how I'm not letting her twist her nose further than her ears. Does that look square? Yep. Pretty good, right? I'm not looking for this, where her nose is past her ears. See how this is falling, right? You see how that messed everything up? I'm keeping her nose square with both reins right there. You guys see that? I don't want her head twisted. I'm not looking to untrack her pull, right? So then I'll set her down. We'll jog up, right in here. I'm gonna take her and bend her again. Right there, that's better. See, she didn't, oh, got a little messed up. Okay, she didn't take it away from me quite as much, but I wanna make sure I stay in this position, right? She's gonna bounce and fall her way around and twist on me. I wanna make sure I stay in my position. There, and see how that jog really stood up right there? She came up in her chest now. Now she's using her back. We got a good springy one, two, one, two jog. That's what I wanna see, right? Turn loose, take a hold again. Want this horse to be very flexible right here. Really flexible, right? So now, see how my reins are tight? I'm close to her mouth. I'm gonna add that outside rein, straighten everything out. And now I'm tapping this left rein, want her to drop in right here. This is drop in. But see how she's not falling to the inside. She's not tipping over to the inside now, right? She's staying up off my inside leg. I'll take that to a low ball, okay? So here, bend it, softness. I wanna get that out of there, right? That head fling come undone where she hollows her back out has gotta go away. She's got a lot of ability to come undone right here. She's gotta stay under this bit. So I gotta keep my hands low, keep them wide, bring it in, keep it low, and then loaf it off. Good, good. Loafing around, outside rain. Just kind of taking measures. She's getting a little bit heavy on my hands. There, she came back. Want to add some pressure. Let her sit on my hands. She's in my hands. That's what I want. Let her find this shape. Figure out how do you take your body and do something with this. Set it down. Ride. See what I got. About as far as I can go right there because of how fresh she is, right? So I'm going to bend her down. Push her over. So, hey, let's get back up on my feet a little bit harder. Right? Back on my feet a little harder. I'll lope off one more time. We'll take that question. Right here, drop her in. Good. Good. Set it down. Right. Back into my circle. So I'm going to rock her over and back in. Bonnie, this is what I was talking about. Make that circle come around. Make her put her weight on her back in. Lope around. Came up too high right there. I'm going to bend it down. Question? Yep. Um, when you turn her loose, do you completely pitch her away or just let the rein slide back out, slowing, reducing contact? Yep. Just because if I throw her away, I'm probably going to be really running, right? So I want to just kind of let her down and say, hey, let's see if you can hold that, right? See if you can hold that. I'm going to help you. I'm going to be right here to help you a little bit. 
But see, like right there, I like that load ball. She kind of had to find her way through it. But like right here, I've given her some room and she's kind of just staying down in my hands, right? She's kind of just staying in there. So I'm gonna shuffle a little bit. Then I'm away with my hands, but my legs are still connected. Right? I'm still here saying, hey, are you with me? Are you still right here with me? Are we riding along? Then I might try and throw her away and see where I'm at, but not very long, right? What do you do when they put pressure on your hands? When they put pressure on my hands, this right here, all right? So I'm either gonna do one of two things. I'm either gonna hold that pressure, hold everything to her till she softens to me, or I'm gonna say, hey, like we're not even thinking about getting soft, so we're gonna come back here. We're gonna take her neck away from her. We're gonna ask her to do that again. So I'm here, loping along, and I'm just gonna pinch her up every now and then and test it out. So I'm gonna say, hey, like we're riding along here. Let's pinch, see what you do. Can you keep loping? See how she came up and down right there? And she got bracy, opened her mouth. I want her to find how to come off my reins, keep your legs driving through, and then set it down. See how she's holding her shoulders up on her own? That's what I'm looking for. Take a hold, pinch it up. So I'm just holding everything to her holding her in this shape, letting her come off of my hands, drop in, get soft, holding this shape to her, still holding. She's not come off of it yet, but she's still loping, right? She's going to try other things. As long as she's loping and I like the rhythm, I'm going to stay right here so she figures out how to come off that on her own. And that's going to be a, like a per horse thing. This horse really had to figure it out for herself. You weren't going to ask this horse to figure it out like she's going to get it on her own. That's better. Like she really had to figure this out for herself, where she had to go. And, and banging on her was not going to work. So this horse, I kind of just have to hold on to, let her bob around, figure it out for herself. I'm going to hold her there until she drops in in the shape that I want. And I'll set it down. Break it down. And wrap it back up. All right. So getting control of this horse's ribs. I'll go to the right a little bit. Move this horse around. Still checking this side. Keep her soft in my hand, right? If I feel pull right here, then I gotta go to that side and get it softened up. And see, I still have that head and neck coming up a little bit. So that's my feet. So I'll close both spurs underneath. I'm gonna pull my spurs up into her until she drops in right there, just holding everything to her. Let her figure this out. Not gonna bang her off of it or anything like that. Just gonna say, hey, you can flop around, right? But we're going to stay right here. I'm going to stay close to you. And, and she's not pulling real hard on my hands, but she's pulling a little bit. So I'm going to keep working that belly, saying, hey, let's soften up, let's soften up, let's soften up. And see, I don't have good rhythm across there, so I'm just staying in. I just stay here. And see, this is what we're talking about with this mare being just a little bit tougher-minded, right? She's a little stubborn, so it takes her a little while to figure out. So like, I turned loose right there, and she didn't gracefully take it back, right? <laughs> she tried to like just rip it back. Wrong. How about just slow and soft and supple across? No. See that right there? So I took it, I gave it back to her for a second. She went, ah, can't do that. Can't take it away from me. Go ahead. Do you train all age horses in a snaffle? Yes. Yep. And, and like, it's hard because like for us, no, I don't like that. For us, I'll keep working while I talk. For us, we don't get the luxury of getting like broke horses sent to us. <laughs> ever. So for us, it's usually a lot of retraining, right? Or breaking young ones. So uh, if I had like, oh, this is a 12 year old horse that's been shown his whole life. He's a, you know, he was top 10th at Congress and he was started by Aaron, right? Then it'd be like, okay, we could do something fun with that horse. Probably could ride him in a bridle a little more. But for us, we're usually getting horses we got to retrain and fix or make from the beginning. Um, and teach how to go around, and that snaffle work for me. All right, so getting that horse soft and supple, getting that stuff out of there, that's all snaffle work to me. Not going to be able to put any flexibility in in a shank fit, right? So if I had the luxury of getting horses sent to me from good trainers or good programs, it'd be a little different probably, but for now, a lot of snaffle work in my program, just because I want them to be soft and supple, right? I want to be good horses for everybody that gets up here, so they can get on and do whatever they want, Ask this horse, put her in lots of positions, do lots of stuff with her. Right, so now I'm just testing my buttons out. That's good right there. Come in, shuffle. Ask her to break in half a little bit. 
Get that neck down. Better down, rise. Still staying connected through my outside leg, my inside leg. Not gonna throw her away and say, hey, do it on your own completely because she's not ready for that. But as long as she's kind of trying a little bit and giving me a little effort, I'll just keep riding. Good. 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 But that's kind of like putting the pieces together for us, getting my hands wide, keeping that horse down in her neck, shuffling her up to me. So down, up, right? And that's gonna be true, whatever I'm doing. Down, let's see, you drop her down, don't drop her a little bit. Drop her way down, way down. So she's gotta stretch this. She's really tight right here, really tight across her back. Stretch that neck down, okay? Get it way down there, because I can always bring that jaw back up then, right? Right here. This is where I want my horse to ride. Jaw up to me, and that's just little wiggles out of my hands, little squeeze, work that chin up to me. And then we take that and loop it off from there, right? right. If you are new to learning to ride Western, but you have 11 year old broke horse with a bit of a tough mouth, what would you recommend? If you are new to riding horses, uh, watch our videos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, if you are brand new to riding horses or new to pleasure, find yourself a good reputable Western pleasure trainer to learn from, right? But keep in mind that success in the show pen and ability to teach are usually not the same thing. Right? So don't get distracted by just results. Find yourself a good teacher, someone that can explain it, because that's not necessarily like the wins in the show pen, right? What bit would you recommend for her? What bit would I recommend? Because it's, she has 11 year old broke horse with a bit of a tough mouth. What, what would you recommend? Um, what bit would you recommend? So odds are good that, and that's, that's where I don't want people to get in trouble, right? So when you're riding, your bit selection, is entirely dependent on what feel you're going for and how hard you want to work, all right? So when I'm riding this horse, like I said, I like this medium twist snaffle. That's my main thing. Um, Cause that's the, like she pushed against it right there. If I'm riding this horse along, I'm always gonna be really soft with my hands and my feet. I have a certain amount of pressure that I want to ride with, where if I roll my spur up or I close my fingers and I wiggle my hands like this, I don't want you to push against that anymore, all right? If I'm riding along and my horse is not respecting the fact that I'm riding her soft like that, then I've got to change my equipment, all right? So if I was riding along here and I've shuffled the bit and I've got my belly soft and I'm working on things, then she's still leaning all over that. Give her something that's less comfortable to lean on, right? So give her a, a, a thinner twist that's less comfortable to push against. Same thing with her sides. If I go to her belly and I got my leg on there nice and soft, right, and I'm right here, and she were turning left into my foot, then I've got to go to something that's a little less comfortable to lean on, right? Something that's a little less fun to sit on over there, okay? But I'm not going to go to it spurring and jerking on her, right? I'm not going to spur and jerk to make her get soft to it. She's got to make that choice for herself. Okay, another question? Yep. Are these good exercises for an older trained horse coming back into work after a long time off? Use a 100%. snaffle or a full bridle bit? 100% and a snaffle. 100% and a snaffle, right? For me, bridles are for getting your horse ready to show, all right? Snaffles, and we talked about that a little bit before. The, the more places your bit moves, the more loose your horse is gonna be, all right? A snaffle's jointed in a lot of places, so my horse should be really loose. I wanna focus on loosening this horse up until she's in the shape and the position that I'm looking for, right? This little hockey stick shape loping around. When she's in the correct shape, then I'm gonna put her in a bridle and get her solid there. That's when I'll stiffen her back up. Go ahead. What if you don't have enough leg pressure because of my age? Tricky, yeah, tricky. You always have those limitations. Um, you kind of have to say like, okay, what are what are my goals for my horse, right? If I don't, if I can't get a lot of leg on there, again, I'll probably change my equipment. Now, if my horse runs away, I'm probably gonna have to find some help, right? I'll probably say, hey, you know what? Like maybe this is too much to maintain on my own. And if it's just going to get a tune up and coming back or whatever that might be. Um, but changing your equipment is huge. So if you can't get that horse where you want him to be, if he's not respecting your leg, put something on there that he'll respect. Now, if you put that on and he runs away, you kind of have to back up, right? If I put that spur on and she were to run from this, see, she moved with my spur right there. If she were to take off sideways, I'd put a duller spur on, all right? 
right? But make sure that you're going to him in a way that's going to make him where you want him, right? I want pretty solid contact. When I'm side passing her around here, we're talking about our horses being light, but I want to be able to dig that spur a little bit, right? So that I know that spur is definitively in her side. I don't want to put that calf on and have my horse be running sideways, just feather light where she's taken off because my leg is out here, you know? Go ahead. How would you train a horse with a, with a longer back and a little more impulsion? Longer back and a little more impulsion. So we talked yesterday about form to function, right? This horse is made pretty compact. She's kind of your typical pleasure horse look. She's a little short, but, <laughs> but you can see how she's made. Real round hip, big, strong horse, right? Compact, strong, little horse. So if you have a horse that's a little bit bigger or longer back, what you have to remember is it is harder for him to maintain the same position as her, all right? So he's either got to work harder and have more try than she does or be stronger. One of those two things got to happen, right? Because it is physically more demanding for him to keep this piece engaged because it is back here. So keeping all this round is going to take more muscle or more try, right? And that's one of those things where if you put those two horses against each other, you might have to show that horse out in the open where he looks good, right? Show him pushed up a little bit on the inside. As long as he's staying there and being consistent, you'll be just fine. There's been lots of horses that have shown on the inside. Um, best seat in the house is probably the most famous one that they used to show her big and sweepy on the inside track and she won everything. But then they sold her to a youth girl and the girl didn't have the confidence that Deanna Green had to show her on the inside. And they kept her on the rail and she didn't look as good, right? And she didn't like it. She seemed like she was a lot more upset being on the rail than she was when she was out in the open and could be real free and sweepy. Go ahead. Um, how do I have her mane done? <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> this is Macy's handiwork. <laughs> they're like little, I call them bubble braids. She's had them in for like a couple weeks now, but I stuck a little band and then just kind of went down her mane. <laughs> she said, I have a guy with a thick, long mane and braiding, it takes a long time. It does take a long time, but those are the easiest things I could do at the time This isn't really braided, right? That's just gathered up? Yeah, I yeah. just literally just put it like a ponytail, 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 ponytail. Yep. <laughs> okay, how about we have another question? Sure. Um, on a lazier horse who loves to lean and be carried, would holding a crop like an English type rider be a bad idea to help push him to move him forward? Or do you always stick to spurs and seats? Nope, we've used a crop on Marley before. She was one of those super lazy horses. I wish I had one here to show you guys. Um, Marley's retired, so we're not riding her, but all of these other horses aren't real lazy. Um, but Maybe yeah. we can get our retirement and show them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but using a crop, absolutely. But the caveat that I'll say is that when you put a crop on, make sure you go to your voice and your feet first, or you'll just make her depend on the crop. Yeah, and you can't show the crop. You so. can't show the crop, right? So if you're riding long and all you do is go like this to make them step up, then you're going to have a heck of a time in the show pen because you can't use your crop. So what I might do with one like that is I might go like, like, and if they don't respond to that, I'm gonna crop them right away, right? So that there's a little bit of like, whoa, we gotta go somewhere, we gotta do something, rather than have my horse like, just rely on the crop. So you have to be very deliberate to go through your, your stages, like plan A, use my feet, plan B, use my voice, plan C, use my crop. Right? She said, so is that good, like a good idea for text? Yeah, it wouldn't hurt, wouldn't hurt at all. Certainly an option. Don't make him scared of the crop, right? Don't just clobber him with it and make him worried about it. But if you're going along, like if I had one that was jogging and I was always got to push. I know. I always have last word. <laughs> if I was jogging her along, I might be jogging right here and I'll go. And if she didn't step up and like get up here, I might reach back and tap her, right? But I want to make sure that she can step up. And then when I'm jogging along, carry yourself and then just sit there, right? Just let your legs out. See how I can drop my heels away from this horse and she stays jogging? She's like she's about to break, that's bad. I don't want her to not jog, right? I clucked, she should be jogging right here. So if, I, if I'm sitting on my horse and she's not jogging up, I might like get up and like smack them, right? But, but they gotta stay on their own. They gotta have that self-carriage. If that horse is going along and it's not uh, not holding himself up, then I'd use my crop a little bit. Okay. That question. All right. Awesome. Very good. 
That's a good ride. Um, I don't know if I'll be on tomorrow. We'll be maybe some Q&A tomorrow, probably not a live video. Um, not sure what our plan will look like. We gotta give these guys a little day off. They've earned their little break. They worked all weekend. She said, I'm shocked Marley's retired. We wanted to have a baby out of her. Yep. Yep. She's I've been dying her. to have a baby the out of her. check is tomorrow. Yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah. So we will <laughs> find out tomorrow, fingers crossed, that she's pregnant. Um, I think she is. <laughs> she looks bad already. As you can tell. She's three weeks in. She's pregnant. Two she's pregnant. <laughs> she talks to me. Day preg check. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, Marley did a lot of winning for us, and she was great. We're on to Peanut, and Marley can have babies. I know. I'm really excited. I've been dying to have a baby out of her. Yep. We and dying. who knows? We might pull her out. and. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. But as of right now, she's enjoying her life outside in the pasture, she needs to be fat and being sassy. <laughs> yep, she's going on her a hard time. Uh, we are breeding her to um, making, making me really wild. Yep. So we're hoping for a black baby yep. and a white blaze. <laughs> she's got her order all picked out. I'm going to be so mad if she doesn't have a black <laughs> baby. <laughs> if there was a drive through horse baby picker, she's got it all planned out. We're really excited about it. Yep. But yeah, making me really wild. Um, Really excited about him. I think that's going to be a really cool stud for the industry. Um, like with him, I don't want my studs to be just average everywhere. I think that horse was incredible in his jog and the way he loped his front end, like the way he stands up and slings his front leg out there. I, I think he was amazing. So I want my stud to be kind of a freak because then I can take my, my mare and say, well, what are her weaknesses? And I can breed him to that stud or her to that stud and get a better horse. Right. Like it kind of add to her weaknesses. So like, I don't need to breed this horse to a great jogging stud because she's a great jogger. So the odds of her baby being a great jogger, I would think are pretty high. So, but Marley, as you guys remember, was not a great jogger. No. So if you take, make a move with a wild, if it got half of his jog, that fixes our males from our mare's hole. We're hoping for a filly. Yeah. I want a filly so bad. <laughs> We love our mares. They try harder. They're they I love they them. Done, right? They take a little longer, but they do try hard. We have to do like a like a poll for names and stuff. Yeah. I kind of want to like since we always call her Sharky. I kind of want to name the, like the baby baby shark. <laughs> barn I was thinking it'd be so cute because you could do like Mama Shark and Baby Shark. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> no. See what I have to deal with, guys. <laughs> but if you guys have any cute names, you have to start sending them into us. Yeah. Because yep. we're going to need some help. I'll be certain she's crimson and making me willy wild. Yeah. Yep. We'll have to think of a good little mix for that. Yep. But yeah, we're super excited. Yeah. But yeah, and that's kind of like like the, the question about the longer horse, right? Um, if, if my stud can add to my mare and make her a better jogger right out the gate, right? We didn't really have to do a lot of training on this horse's jog. She just did it. So the more natural horse you can start with, the less horse training you have to do. Right? Awesome. Very good. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. Thank Remember you, guys. To follow us on, on Facebook. I can't accept your friend requests. I'm really sorry. Don't worry, I can, though. <laughs> saddle's a little loose. So this is a good example. We do not ride with tight saddles, guys. We do not ride with tight saddles. We want these saddles to be loose. If that saddle's going to slide, I want it to. All right? Don't ride with tight saddles, OK? We want to be able to stick our arm through there if we could, right? <laughs> So make sure you ride loose so you let that horse tell on you if it's rolling its body. And don't but, forget, our giveaway is going to end in yep. two days. So if you're not in that, check it out on Instagram. Yep, that's on Tuesday. And thank you guys so much for letting us get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. That is amazing. Yes. We love you guys. Keep spreading the word. We'll keep doing these videos for you. Yep. Awesome. Thanks so much. We'll see thank you guys you. in the next one. Bye.